So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI video. In today's video, we're going to talk about data flows. I've been setting quite a few data flows lately and the experience is not really quite what I expected. So I've created a set of routines that help me work with data flows and you know ease some of the problems that you will encounter when working with data flows. So hopefully they will, this will make your experience a lot smoother than it's been for me. Uh, I've... I'm, I've recorded these two separate days, so you will see two different clothes, just so you know. And mainly because I forgot three tips that I think are important to mention, okay? So with that said, let's get started. Here are my top data flow tips to get that thing working. So the first thing when you, you know, are working with data flows, you obviously need to connect to the source and then you know, a data flow moves data from the source to a data lake. I found, and this is a new experience for me because if I remember correctly, I might not remember correctly, but if I remember correctly, you could connect to a lot of data sources, especially cloud data sources without a gateway. Now it asks me for a gateway all the freaking time. All the time, you need a gateway, you need a, and gateways, you know, is another help. So I, I really try to avoid gateways as much as I can and put things in the cloud because they, they, it's just they're expensive if you have them on the cloud and they are a pain to manage. So I had sources on SharePoint in the cloud, and I was required to use a gateway, and I was thinking, why? So. The way I solved it that really works for me is that instead of using the shared data flow, I created a data lake or the shared data lake, I created a data lake and use that instead. So you create a data lake and then you move in your workspace, you say, I want to use my data lake instead of the default one. In order to do that though, you need to have a clean workspace. You cannot have anything in there, it won't work. So be aware of that. And once I set up that, then any online source that did not require a gateway by itself, I could actually move it to the data lake without issues. Beautiful, thank God, <laughs> because that was really, really annoying. It took me quite a while to actually figure things out on that end. So we've managed to connect to our data sources and now we're working on the Power Query Online experience. The Power Query Online, beautiful. And I know that a lot of the development has been doing done on Power Query Online, on data flows. So I thought, well, oh, it probably works better than Power BI Desktop. Mm -mm -mm. It does not, it does not. So number one, slow. I had a million rows, Excel file, a million rows. It's not that big, a million rows. And it was so slow. It was like, Oh my God, while working with it on Power BI Desktop, it was. Huh? So if your data is a little bit big, it's, it's always going to be slower. Right? For what I found, no matter the size, it's just going to be slower. And once you start working with it, you're going to get a ton of errors. And they won't tell you what the error is. Example. I had some queries that I already had on Power BI Desktop. I just wanted to move them to the cloud, copy them, and then, you know, runs. I says you have an error. Okay, which one? You have an error. Then I'm, tell me which error do I have? It just have like a warning sign that says the data flow mm -mm -mm has an error. How is that useful? Like really so terrible. And tip, important tip. I do that now for all my data flows. I have a Power BI desktop where I do the development and then I copy the code to the data flow afterwards once another is working. Because when I had errors on Power BI on the data flow, I could actually copy it back to the desktop and then the desktop would tell me what the error actually was. And then I could work, right? Because it, it was, I cannot go over 20 steps every time I have an error. It just doesn't work that way. So Power BI Desktop Development, copy paste. And now you might say, oh, good. Well, not really. Not as easy as you think. Here's the thing. For some reason, 
The syntax for Power Query Online is not the same as the syntax generated for Power Query Desktop. And that <laughs> flew my mind, like, what the heck? So when you're copy pasting from Power BI Desktop to Power Query Online, you will get a big pop up, like, blown, like red lights everywhere and saying, hey, this syntax is not allowed in Power Query Online. And go figure what the syntax is, because it just, do you think that it highlights the thing that is different? No, it just gives you the entire row. And then you see like a bunch of red, it's like, oh, 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 okay, <laughs> let's just do it and check the data afterwards. Come on, tell me where. Another thing that I experienced when copying from Power BI Desktop to Power Query Online is that if you copy instead of the entire thing in the advanced editor, that's when you get the big pop up. If you copy only a line, like a, a step, and then you paste it in the data flow, because the syntax is different, you're going to get an error. And if you don't realize that, you wait all the way, boom, 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 and then it says again, you have an error, like, where it doesn't change it. It doesn't change it, which is so annoying. One of the things, just as an example, you have step name. In Power Query Online, the step name is capital letter M, mm, capital letter M. Mm. In Power Query, on the desktop, it is capital name, lowercase, everything. And that will give you an error on the online when you copy just the formula. Uh, oh my God. I mean, th these are the small things that it's like, why don't they have the same th syntax? They should have the same syntax. Another thing, and this is an understandable thing, is that, for example, dates. I was copying data that I have uh, with dates on, I copied it online, and then on Power BI Desktop, I could just change type date, and it worked. But when I put it online, depending on what the settings are for I think it's a browser. Maybe you need to do the regional settings. Mm -mm -mm. So that's another thing. It will give you an error. It won't tell you that what the error is. You have to figure out. So if you have this type of errors, check dates because that's normally one of the errors. Another thing that I notice is that all fields have to have data type. In Power Query Desktop, you just load everything and then no data types. It will give you trouble, but in data flows, that's not allowed. So you have to have a data type and it will give you an error and it will say, actually, that's nice. Uh, at least I think it will always say that, hey, you need to have all data types. And if you ignore it, it will create itself a step and it will try to guess what the data types are and you might <laughs> what the issues you can have with that. So better that you control the data types yourself and you actually, you know, specify them. So you don't have to let Power Query do that by itself. Another thing that I don't think is a good thing at all is that if you get errors on your rows when doing the data connection, you know, the data type change, in Power BI desktop Power Query, you actually get an error. And then when you load it, it says, hey, we have 23 errors or 2,000 errors, whatever. And then you can go and say, okay, what was the issue? Data flows do not do that though. What they do is they convert all errors to null. And that is an automatic step that you can't not remove. It will do it by itself. And that's not good. That's not good at all because sometimes the error should be null. Sometimes I did something wrong with the step and I want to know. And that's once more do your data flow transformations on Power Query Desktop because you have full control of what's going on. Those automatic things won't happen. And if you need to fix the errors, you can do that. You will know that there's an error. You have no way to know if there's an error or not. That step gets generated always. So was it an error or not? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Um, next thing. So we're actually doing the steps. We're succeeding. We have uh, two tables. We want to do some merge. Good thing, good case use case for data flows actually. Do the merge there and then import it into Power BI Desktop. So it is already computed and nice. <laughs> so uh, when you're doing merge, say you have your fact table here and then you have a lookup and you want to add that information to the main table. So if you load both tables in the data flow, it's going to say, ah, 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 this is a computed entity. It requires premium. So you need to disable 
the one of the merged queries and then it will work, right? If it is possible. So if you need both tables, you could actually load these, disable that, and then load this again, and load it separately, right? So there are ways to go around that premium thing. Just so you know, there are ways around it. So now we have done all the transformations that we need. There is a beautiful button down at the bottom that says save and close. You say, oh, I've made it, I've made it. You click there and then it starts running some tests. It says, oh, we're testing the schema and something, something, whatever. It takes forever just to begin with. I don't know what they are doing, but it takes forever. And then most often you, you won't pass that test and you are not able to save until that thing does whatever the heck is doing which is super annoying. I mean, you should do, you should be able to save. Maybe it saves, I don't think it saves. It may to save and then don't load, right? It says, no, I'm not going to let you load because, but l let me save it because I don't have time. I have a team it's called now, so <laughs> I don't want to lose this work. So it's super annoying. And it's very, I, I don't know what it's doing in that check. If somebody knows just, let me know down below. It's like some schema, whatever, whatever. It's a big test and says a lot of stuff, but I don't know what it does. So, okay. So another thing that has been quite annoying is the refresh. So in order to refresh, once you set up your data flow, uh, you press save and close. It successfully loads. You get a pop up that says refresh now. It lasts for like two seconds. If you don't capture that, you have to go back. And then you get to go forward, it, you know, if you guess you want to check something else. And I wish there was a refresh button right on top. So make sure you catch that refresh button before it disappears. Otherwise, you will be finding yourself going back and forth all the time. Again, this is a small thing, but hopefully they'll fix it soon. Let's imagine that we actually pass the st that test. You get a table in the data flow. Good. You are not done yet. You're not done yet. You still have to pass the last refresh, right? And that la last refresh is, I would expect that if we've gone through all the steps, no error was found. You did this, whatever test you do when I press save and close, it will load, but no, you can still get another error once you click load. And the error message is as horrible as the other one. So first of all, you have to go to the refresh history. There is a button. It downloads a file, a CSV file, of all files that you have to, you know, now I've learned how to read this. So I don't have to convert to anything, but, and the error most of the time is not understandable. So you are left again, like, okay, what went wrong? Most of the time, that thing happened when I was not using Power Query Desktop as my development tool for data flows. Once I've done that, things have worked a lot better. So if you are going to remember anything from this, use Power Query Desktop for development. <laughs> That's my main tip. Okay, so the next thing is once I was done with the data flow, obviously at the moment there's just one person that can edit at a time. So I'm done. I want my customers to take over and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, the information online is a little bit outdated. It says that it's not possible, but it actually is. If you click dot, dot, dot settings or well, they click, they have to do it. They, there will be a, a button that says take over and that will allow them to take over the data flow. It's a shame that it can only be one owner, but I think they are fixing that though. So on, in time it will come. Okay, here is another thing that is actually quite annoying in general for Power Query and is the privacy settings. I know that it's meant there to protect the data. I absolutely get it, but just the execution is, is, is quite annoying. So you are going to have privacy settings issues with Dataflow. It's the same experience. The, the thing is that where are the privacy settings? Where? It took me forever to find it. So it is actually on the Power Query editor on the home button is the third button where it says options. So options and then the thing is like local settings. 
there you will find the privacy settings and then you can there is not that many options but at least you can fix the privacy settings if you run into those troubles now incremental refresh you have actually managed to refresh but now you want to refresh only new data it is a premium so incremental refresh is available for pro nowadays but not for data flows why why I mean, the, it is Microsoft resources that have been wasted because we are not able to increment a refresh. It's a waste of energy. It's a waste of, it's a waste of everything. So why just let us do incremental refresh in a pro license, as we can do already with pro. Okay. <laughs> now you have your data flow. Everything is running beautiful, and you are going to connect to it using Power BI. Beautiful. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is there are two connectors. There is a Power BI data flow connection connector, and there is a platform, Power Platform data flow connector. Good. What is the difference? Well, one of them is in beta, which is a Power Platform one. And when you click on it, it will give you this big message that says, hey, we're still developing this, it can break. And I was like, ah. <laughs> Here's the thing. The Power BI connector, the, the the one that is not in beta or that is not under development, you need to be able to you need to log in on the connections, data connections. You need to be able to log in on the account that you're doing the development for in order for it to work. So if I um if I develop a data flow for myself and the data flow has Kerbal as an organization account on my user. And then I try to connect a data flow from another customer. It won't work because it will give me Kerbals. So I need to go into data connections and change the login, which is it's an annoyance. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's an annoyance. So the Power Platform Connector fixes that. Hallelujah. And I thought, oh, how neat. So obviously, I'm going to use the Power Platform Connector, obviously. Well, it broke. <laughs> and um, it, I, oh, it was so frustrating to troubleshoot because when it broke, it actually, I went to the data flows, everything was working, everything was refreshing. I had no errors anywhere. Like, oh, why the heck is this not working? But I noticed that all the data flows had failed, all of them. And like, what are the chances that all my data flows suddenly have changed? So I tested the old connector and then I could connect. So from that, you use the old one still because at some point it will break and it took me a while just to change all the connections. That's been maybe like 15 minutes, but still. Okay, so I hope these few tips and tricks and things to watch out for will make your data flow experience heaven. And uh, I will see you again on the next video on Thursday. Now that we're changing the schedule, probably not sure exactly what it will be, but hopefully something good. So I will see you on Wednesday as always. So let me know if you still have any data flow uh, questions or you have some tips and tricks that I haven't covered. And uh, I'll see you again on Thursday. Bye bye.